Hello Internet and welcome back. So, this is something completely different. I was looking at my favorite website the other day. Um, it's a Danish, Swedish, Finnish, Norwegian website called Biltema or tra translated directly Car Theme, which is a huge uh, hardware uh, seller. And as, actually, I was looking for an air compressor. Do you know what I came home with? This one. And you might be saying, that is not an air compressor. And you are right. This is an electric bike. A very cheap one, actually. Um, so this is a budget bike. Uh, and when I went to the website and said, hey, you can have a thousand kronos off. I thought, well, okay, that's, that's, a, that's a good offer. And then they continued to say, if you sign up for this uh, online uh, invoice thing, you can get another 10% off. So this bike here is around $700 and it's electric. So let's have a go and see what we can do with it, right? There is a small box of accessories that comes with this bike. Uh, pebbles. I don't think we're gonna need those, but anyway, okay. There is a charger, and uh, I should mention that the that the shop said you have to charge the battery for 18 hours. So I did. Then of course we have a manual with some thing. I don't know even know what this is. A thing I'm about. It might actually say in the manual what it is. All right, we have ourselves a bike. So the first thing about this, it's called a budget bike. It's around $700, if I didn't mention before, which is actually pretty cheap. The cheap comes with some issues though. So you have to get the battery out, right? To charge it. Well, you can charge it with the, with the battery inside, but if you have to take the battery out, have to unlock it and then you have to lift out the battery. So in order to lift out the battery, you have to <laughs> take away the seat post. Well, okay, we can just raise the seat post, right? No. This is probably by design. Okay. So the battery pack itself is pretty standard, I guess. 24 volts, 7.8 amp hours. It's a 200 watt motor, so it's not gonna be any rocket, for starters. Um, I'll go for a spin and then see how it goes. But before I do, I have to take out the seat and then reinsert the battery. All right, I'm back. That was actually quite interesting. I learned a couple of things. First thing is you need to put some air in the tires before you take a ride. Second thing, I need to raise the handlebars. Handlebar. Third thing is I have a large slope outside. This bike can actually, with the small 200 watt motor, propel me upwards without me pushing in the pedals. Fourth thing is that I think we should modify this bike. So I think I have an idea. So down here next to the left pedal here there's a small cable coming out and this cable goes into this uh, 
ring here and I think this is what is called uh, the cadence sensor. So this sensor here figures out if the user or the cyclist is actually pedaling uh, and, and providing power. So what I tried outside just now was that I was pedaling really slow and the motor would actually be on all the time. So we have to figure out a way to intercept the signal here because if we make a small circuit that can send this signal to the motor then we are basically telling the controller that hey we are pedaling you should provide power and of course we should be pedaling I think this is highly legal but anyway um, we should try and or I should try and and intercept the signal and generate generated by myself then I can have a switch up on the handlebar where I can activate the auto pedaling feature so to speak so actually this is going 25 kilometers an hour um, which is it's not super fast I was actually hoping that maybe we could trick this into going faster so I was uh, in the beginning uh, when I got this bike I had the idea that we could look for um, the cadence, or not the cadence sensor, but uh, a speed sensor of some sort. But I think that is uh, integrated into the motor. So determining how fast we're going will probably be harder, or tricking the system to think that we're going slower than we actually are is probably going to be harder than I thought. Um, but we can trick the cadence sensor here, this cable here, and make a small circuit that can create that pulse train that is coming from the cadence sensor. And that might be enough for us to just al allow the bike to, to, to run without us pedaling. And then of course we should add a dead man switch so the bike will stop if something goes wrong. So, very cheap bike. I think the cheapest parts around um, for a lot of the, the components here, but actually it was a surprisingly nice ride. I was expecting something way worse. I have to be honest about that. So uh, this is the bottom of the bike and we have the, I think the cadence sensor going in here and all the other wires going in here. So all the electronics and the controller itself is inside this house here. So I'm gonna take a screwdriver and see what we can find inside here. I'm guessing it is all fully integrated, so there might not be anything of interest in here. But let's have a look anyway. Another thing I know that I want to change is the, the wheel in here that, that drives the chain. It is way too big, and I think if I change that for a smaller one, then the gear ratio will be much better. So that will also be in the future. Okay. Let's see what we have here. We have nice connectors. That is really good. And we have a box that is just wedged in here. Okay, interesting. Uh -huh. Motor controller for EPAC Ananda MC5-BO. 24 volts. Max continuous power, 250 watts. Interesting. Three screws. That could be the the driver, the driver, and we have two wires, significant color here, and three wires, significant color. So we are probably looking at a brushless motor here. We probably want to have a closer look at this drive unit. That looks pretty interesting. Maybe we can tweak this one. So everything in here is potted. There is no way we're gonna get in there. Everything is coated on filled with a thick silicone rubber. Yeah, well, that was what we expected, right? So these units are not meant for servicing at all. 
Um, which is kind of sad, actually. Because, I mean, at some point, something surely will break down on these units. And then you can just toss these away. Which is kind of a bummer. So, yeah. There's no point in trying to do anything fancy here. Well, we could try to take a knife and carve this out, but this will take forever. And this is clearly not meant to be of any use to anyone that tries to do anything in here. So there are three screws here that tightens down the, the heat sink on the inside to the outside, but it has nothing to do with uh, yeah, anything. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of a dead end here. Motor controller unit is really optimized to just be whatever it is it is uh, and stuck with the settings that it has. So, from what I gather, the silicone here is at least 10 millimeters thick on the thickest parts and a few millimeters here in the in the corner where there is a control PCB. So I'll close this up again and then we'll see if we can do something less invasive on this part. Okay, so we're back at the bike and there is one connector that I failed to mention before. This is a three wire connector, uh, black, red and white. And this is for the, the cadence sensor. So. Why three wires? I mean, it's only generating a signal, right? So might, we might be so lucky that we have actually a voltage here. Let's just see here. Okay, so I have 4.9 volts between the red one and the black one. That's actually pretty nifty because that means that we have a power output that maybe we can have power to a small microcontroller that can generate the signal for us. So the signal obviously will, will be, or ob not obviously, but I hope will be the white wire. So we have an active sensor that might be a hole, hole sensor. So the cadence sensor is actually just sensing the magnetic field inside this, this ring. This will make sense at least. And if that is true, then the signal will possibly be a, a low to high transition. And if there is something we can do with a microcontroller, then that will be generating a square wave. So that will be quite interesting. Actually, we might be able to try and put a signal generator on from the ground and to the wide wire and see if we can, a square wave will manipulate the bike to run. Um, that will be interesting. So right now we have nothing. Let's try and attach the sensor. Ah, need to tuck these wires away. Also, we want to have to engage the power of the bike like this. Okay, let's see. Wow, there's definitely something going on here. Let's break this. Did you hear it? <laughs> So the motor is definitely picking up some signal from the pedal and um, <laughs> that's very interesting. Okay, so maybe we can trick the bike into thinking that we're pedaling by uh, sending a signal. Let's try and detach this. Don't try this at home, kids. So this is just a wire. And I'm gonna plug this in between uh, ground and then just hit. <laughs> so that was the signal wire. Aha. Uh -huh. So the ground, ground wire definitely does something. So I'm just pulsing right now, making the bike think that we're actually pedaling. And that works.
That's actually pretty nice. Let's see if we can do the same with the five volt line. There's nothing going on. Okay, so we know that the signal is actually just the ground being connected. Let's try that one more time just for the kicks of it. <laughs> Okay, so this is really, really simple, right? So what if we can make a circuit that can short circuit the, the ground and the white wire, or actually just connect the white wire to ground, let's say five times a second. And as long as I push a button, that pulse will be going. If we insert that into this connector here, then we can actually uh, simulate a pedaling. <laughs> All right, guys, that will be in the next video. Thanks for watching.